Building a race car is no joke, and I think most everyone understands that. People watch Formula One or Le Mans, and it sinks in. Refined speed is an almost reality-defying feat. However, like most things in life, watching the end result can only take your understanding so far. I'm sure that seeing the view from the top of Mount Everest is incredible, but what's seen at the end is only a shadow of the experience. The people who summon the tenacity, grit, and raw strength to climb that mountain get to enjoy a special kind of appreciation for that view, a primal respect for the mountain, and a sense of achievement that most people can only dream about. Building a race car is basically the car enthusiast's equivalent to climbing Mount Everest. It's an ultimate achievement that can only be fully appreciated by making the trek yourself. Formula student is a whole different level of insanity. Shout out to Jack Terrell and the University of Alabama 2024 team for the footage that I'm using in the background here. And thank you to all of you for watching. It means a lot to me that you're willing to watch my videos and I hope you're entertained and enjoy what I have to say. Please understand that I'm not saying Formula student cars are the fastest, most advanced, or most difficult to build cars in the world. The difficulty of building any race car or high performance vehicle depends on far too many factors to definitively rank the difficulty. For example, a lemon spec Chevy Cavalier being built by one inexperienced person in his or her spare time on a tight budget with limited tools might feel equally difficult as building a Formula One car, although it certainly would be a cakewalk given the expertise, tools, and time of a Formula One team. What I am saying, though, is that the specific combination of factors that go into competing in Formula Student makes it incredibly unique and challenging. First, some background. From what I understand, the specifics of Formula Student vary slightly from country to country, but the gist is the same. My experience comes from the SAE EV competition held yearly at Michigan International Speedway. Every year, a team composed entirely of students is expected to design an open-wheeled single-seat car, build it, and then compete against other student teams in a series of events focused on evaluating overall performance. This is an engineering-focused competition that does its best to welcome as many teams as possible. There's no wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, but every car that passes technical inspection can compete in acceleration, skid pad, autocross, and endurance events. There are also points available for following good engineering practice, like documentation, and for justifying why you did what you did to a team of judges. I joined BYU Racing in the fall of 2023. I was a sophomore in mechanical engineering with basically no car experience beyond basic maintenance and repairs, so I was willing to go pretty much wherever the team needed help. I ended up as the driver safety specialist, which I thought would be pretty simple. Suffice it to say that I ended up being taken by surprise when I opened up the rule book and found out how extensive, detailed, and stringent the rules are. The head restraint alone has well over 20 bullet points explaining the requirements for its design and utility. The harness, which was the first thing I worked on, has four full pages that lay down the law. Altogether, the entire rulebook is a whopping 143 pages this year in 2025, and it changes a little bit every year. This poses the greatest challenge for brand new teams like BYU Racing in 2023-2024. However, even successful veterans aren't safe. ETS, the winner of the 2023 competition in Michigan, took several days to pass technical inspection last year. This rulebook wouldn't be a big challenge at all for a team of full-time professional engineers, but these cars aren't built by professionals, and they aren't built full-time either. There are two general approaches to Formula Student that I've heard of. I'm sure that every school has their own unique system. One method was used by BYU in the past. Select a team of 10 to 12 senior engineering students and make them do everything, with the car being their senior design project. Doing this, BYU managed to win the Formula Student hybrid competition in 2012, but the team's faculty advisor, Dr. Robert Todd, retired that year, and the program ended. The other approach is what BYU Racing does now. Welcome absolutely everyone and anyone who wants to participate on the team. The only part of the car developed by seniors for their design project is the battery. Everything else is designed, manufactured, and built by volunteers in their free time. The volunteer method has some brilliant advantages, and some weighty disadvantages too. On the one hand, the team has huge publicity. We have well over 50 regularly participating members and about 100 people contribute to the car and the team in some way or another every month. We have a dedicated team of business majors to handle the business side of the competition, a marketing team, and a good mix of students of all grade levels. We have a huge number of individuals to share workloads and collaborate together. I think that we're onto something that could be really successful, but there have been some pitfalls. 
As the leader of the steering and ergonomics team this year, I feel like I've made some big mistakes. People join my team with all levels of progress and prior experience, and I struggle to know how to best help them succeed. I work part-time, I work on this car, and I'm a full-time engineering student, and I can't just tutor people one-on-one through everything they might need to know. I've done everything that I can to be encouraging and help the people who join my team, and there's some really amazing success stories. Some of the new students on my team have self-taught themselves CAD modeling, engineering drafting, manual machining skills, and basic FEA analysis one or two years before they would ever have been taught about those abilities in class, and I think that's amazing. I'm so proud of them, and I'm thankful that I get to work with them. Other students who joined me felt like I didn't give them enough specific instructions or that they didn't really have a place on the team, and they stepped away for that reason. I want to make it very clear that I hold no ill will against these people. I'm disappointed that I wasn't able to help them be a part of the team in the way that I hoped, and I'm grateful for any and all contributions that they made while they were um, participating. Nonetheless, when everyone is getting the car together using their spare time, every single person who can help makes a big difference. That gets me to the next point. The time frame to build these cars is absolutely insane. In Formula SAE, once a chassis has been entered in competition, it can't be entered again. That means we need to build a new chassis every year. For a volunteer team, that's a huge endeavor. Even if a team didn't want to change the chassis design at all, there's a possibility that a rule change would make it necessary. On top of that, even building the same chassis again means hundreds of hours of welding and 3D printing or building fixtures to hold the tubes in place for a steel space frame. If you want to do a carbon fiber monocoque, that's going to be hundreds of hours or more, maybe even thousands of carbon fiber work. Then you have to manufacture everything else and attach the components to the chassis all over again. Even ignoring all of that, using the same chassis as a prior year is a sure way to get absolutely no points for the design competition because the design judges give extensive feedback on each system year over year and expect you to improve and have good reasons for every decision you make. That logic extends to every part of the car. The expectation is not only that you will build a car every year, but that you will build a better and better car every year. All while the seniors who have the most experience leave, people have other life events that take them away from the team, and you have a fresh batch of bright-eyed newcomers showing up eager to build a race car without knowing much of how to do it. I don't care who you are or how smart you are. That's a Herculean task. So why participate on this team? Why do I spend hours working late at night designing fixtures or redesigning broken parts or sweating early in the morning in the welding room with one of our legendary welders to fix the steering mounts that broke? The short answer is because this program is awesome. The long answer is because this program is awesome, and it's also incredibly good for the students who do it. Remember what I said earlier about the people on my team learning skills way earlier than they would have otherwise? That same thing happened to me. I learned basic FEA and developed machining experience way before I ever needed those skills for class, which set me ahead when the time came. On top of that, I was incredibly fortunate to get a local internship at the end of my sophomore year. That was thanks in part to my connection with another team member working at the company. The other part of how I got the job? The skills and real-world experience that I had built working on the car. The companies that students want to work for are looking for people who will push themselves far beyond the basic requirements and expectations of a bachelor's degree. They want people who have experience solving the problems that matter, who understand the stakes and the headaches that can come if the necessary work isn't put in at every step of the design and development process. The companies inventing tomorrow want people who are learning how to work in teams to build incredible things today. Class is important, but experience, that's golden. Remember what I said at the beginning about how meaningful the view from Mount Everest is for those who hike it? The biggest reason why I keep going is because Formula Student has become my personal Everest. Sometimes it's absolutely grueling, and I question what I'm doing with my time. I wish that I could be at home playing video games and decompressing after a long day. But the feeling of seeing the 2024 car drive, sitting behind the wheel, even if only for a few minutes, reminds me why I keep going. There's nothing like seeing a car that I helped build with my friends drive under its own power, hearing the motor hum and the chain gripping the sprockets as it rockets through corners. That car had a lot of issues, and we ultimately didn't get to compete in any driving events at last year's competition. But that car did succeed because it started a fire that burns within me and many of my teammates to this day. Some days it sputters, but every time that we willingly add fuel, we don't regret it. Formula Student 
is a crucible, and at times it can be painful, but it is forging students into the engineers of tomorrow, and I love it.